that show with um oh come on it's showtime i remember that <laughs> i forgot who it is yes, hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on it's roy schneider plays it it's in all that jazz that's right oh yeah 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 that's right hi everybody it's showtime <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so if you're here joining us, please say hi. Tell us who you are and where you're from. And, and for those of you who don't know who I am, which you probably some of you probably don't, because I know we're going live on eight different pages right, right now. We're going live on my personal page, my business page, all of the Celebrate Your Life pages, and we are also going live on Anita Morjani's page. Yay! Yay. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just gonna follow it on my page right now. Okay, there you go. And it's so wonderful to be here. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Liz Dawn and I am the CEO and owner of Celebrate Your Life events. And you may or may not have heard of, of Celebrate Your Life. We've been doing spiritual woo-woo, fabulous retreats, conferences, women's summits for 27 years with amazing and fabulous speakers and best-selling authors such as Anita Morjani. <laughs> and thank you. I want to say Celebrate Your Life does the best events. They are really, really amazing when it comes to events, your <laughs> events. I tell everybody, oh my God, Liz John, she does the best events. She takes care of her speakers. She's amazing. So. Yeah, well, I love doing that. I mean, I absolutely love doing what I do. I'm a producer. I'm a live, I own a live event production company. That's what I do, guys. Yeah. And have any of you ever been to a Celebrate Your Life? Anybody here? But I see so many people here. Let's acknowledge all these oh, wonderful, beautiful. Do, um, have any of you ever been to a So Celebrate now you have to mute it on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> that happened by accident. Right, but Anita. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Suzanne and Christina and BJ. Hi, BJ. And Nuni and Dahlia, Christina and Claudia and Jen and Susie. Oh, Jen, Jen Hill from Nova Scotia. How fun is that? Adriana Asteri and Maria and Ted and Alma and Alyssa. And oh my goodness, I could just go on and on. And I saw a couple of people from Sweden. My niece lives in Stockholm. <coughs> and Sandy. Alexis, do you see all the all the comments, Anita? I'm looking at them now. My God. Well, you can you can look at them on your on the Streamyard. So if you go to your app and over to the right Oops, on your computer screen, a, it'll say comments. Ah, yeah. oh, there we go. So here, that I'll means I have to put my glasses here's Seema. on. Seema is from New York City. She's saying hi, Anita. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, and I have to put this one. From Someone. Surrey, the UK, excellent. Someone's and saying CYL Elena. is amazing. Yay! Oh, Elena, Elena I love it. Elena says that. I've been to a few CYLs and always a beautiful experiences. Yay! Thank you, thank you. Oh, Karina is here. I know Karina's been to a lot of Celebrate Your Lives. All right, so great to be here today. And Anita and I are going to have this great discussion, and we're going to talk all about healing, healing with joy, healing, how that happens for you in your life, how to do that in your life. And what better person to talk about it is Anita Morjani, right? And stay towards the end because we've got kind of a fun surprise for you guys. So make sure you stick around. And Anita. Yes, Liz, Anita. darling. Now, we all know that um, because we've all read her books, which are just beautiful, Dying to Be Me, which Wayne, you know, okay, I just have to say this. Wayne Dyer introduced me to Anita Morjani, and he called me up one day and he said to me, I have a speaker for you. because so I worked with Wayne for about 16 years. He came to celebrate your life in all of our events. And he said to me, I have the most amazing woman for your stage. You have to meet her. I'll even pay for her to come. You've got to meet her. You've got to be there. This yeah. was a million years ago, right? Yeah. And said, you've got to meet Anita Morjani. So my introduction to Anita was through Wayne Dyer and what a beautiful introduction he gave you and what a beautiful entrance into the spiritual arena and doing all of these events. So here we are many years later. 
<laughs> yeah, wow, time has flown. Wayne was amazing. And I even remember when he told me, you have to do a Liz Dawn event. And and yes, and then he told you about me. And then when I went to the first Celebrate Your Life, you guys treated me like a VIP. I was a newbie. I was a Celebrate Your Life version. And you guys treated me like a, yeah, like a VIP, like a queen. It was wonderful. It was really oh. wonderful. Well, you know, it's so important. Every time we do an event, every person, every Every, every person that walks into our events, speakers, attendees, staff, no matter who you are, we just embrace our arms around you with love and nurturing. That's what our programs are all about. It's a beautiful time to take a, uh, a break from your everyday life. So, all right, so Anita, let's talk about your healing journey because we all know about your near-death experience and what had happened and the miracu miraculous healing that you've had. Um, but you also recently just went through something again. Yes, I completely burned out. The thing I didn't realize is that when we have these patterns, this tendency, so, you know, most of you know my story from what happened to me 16 years ago when I had the near-death experience and uh, it was from end-stage cancer. And I understood what caused the cancer. I understood how it was that my tendency to do things from a place of fear, a place of a fear of disappointing people, a place of people pleasing and so on. It was a tendency to do that that completely depleted me. Not only did it deplete me at that time, I'm talking about back then, it um, squashed my, um, my energy, my soul. I was never myself because it was more important for me to be who other people wanted me to be. So I got sick, I developed lymphoma, and, and I understood when I died, when I was on the other side, that the cancer was my own body's way of expressing the energy that I had repressed. I had all this energy that wanted to express itself as me, as Anita, as Anita Morjani, mm -hmm. but I wasn't allowing it to, to express. And we come with this soul that wants to just spread its wings and fly and conquer and do things. But when we live our lives according to what other people want, we kind of we repress the soul and then our body can manifest all these different things. So in my case, um, I had terminal cancer, end stage, and it wasn't the illness that caused me to realize the truth that really we just have to be who we are. It wasn't the illness that cured me of my people pleasing. It was death. It was death that made me realize because even when I was sick at that time, even when I was going through cancer and I was even in the final stages, I was still always more concerned about other people than myself. I always put myself last. So mm -hmm. even people who were taking care of me and helping me um, when I was sick, I would be like, no, no, don't do that. And don't go out of your way. I don't want you to go to any trouble. I was always worried about the people going to any trouble for me, even though I was the one who was sick and dying. And I know a lot of people out there relate to what I'm saying. Yeah, um, especially, I mean, it's sometimes it's hard for healers and, and creatives to receive. Yes. And I, I, I'm seeing some of your questions. So please know I'm not ignoring you. I see Julie, okay. I see what you posted and Venkay, I see what you posted. We're gonna get to those. Um, but what I really want to know is, so so then you had this, this I would say a miraculous healing and you saw who you truly, Yes. Know, were, which is a, a beautiful beam of light and soul and love and joy. However, then these last couple of years, share a little bit about, I don't know if you've shared with your audience yet. What I you have. In, okay, good. I have <laughs> in a couple of my YouTube videos. So, so what happened is, so you, like you move forward about 14 years, 15 years later, um, my life is completely different. So after I healed, after the, I had the miraculous healing from the cancer, and Wayne Dyer discovered my story. And I spoke a lot about what happened to me on the other side and my understanding. So my life changed like 180 degrees. You know, I suddenly Wayne is promoting my story and I'm writing a book and I'm a New York Times bestselling author and I'm flying all over the world. And what I didn't realize and what I didn't check was this tendency that I had that the, the, um, the challenges that you have can come in different disguises. So even though I thought, okay, I'm never gonna be that person again, I'm never gonna be 
that person who was the people pleaser. I've moved on. My life is so much bigger. It's so much better. It's so much more fun. I'm really being myself. But things started to creep in in a different disguise that caught me unaware. So mm -hmm. now at a different level, I was now doing things like bigger things, but many of them I was doing again for the wrong reasons, not because they were fun for me, not because I wanted to do them, but because I would feel, oh, I should do this. Mm -hmm. I really should do this because it's going to help a lot of people, but I'm so tired. I've just come off a trip. I don't want to do it but oh my God, I'll be disappointing all these people and I should do. So I started to fall into that pattern again, but on a bigger scale and it looked different, but yet from within me, the pattern is the same. I'm still not honoring myself and my energy. And this is the point. And this is what my workshops and everything I do now is about. It's really to show people and to teach people that the most important thing is your own energy state. Like you can, when you do something for people, when you are of service to people, if it's coming from a place of, oh my God, I really want to do this. Like right now, I am having so much fun talking to you, Liz. And it brings <laughs> me, I really am. And, and doing events, you know, like I'm so looking, so excited about the event you and I are doing together, that the byproduct is that we're going to be helping a lot of people. But the mm. people who come are going to feel our energy and they're actually going to be uplifted even by the fact that we are doing it from a joyful place. So um, what did you start doing differently? That's what, um, you know, Julie's writing that she feels like she's got one foot on each side and little hope that things can and will get better. When someone is feeling like this, you know, despondent and exhausted or overwhelmed, whatever it is, what is like three little steps that they can start to take okay. like right now so, to do something, to, to start that healing process? So here's something that sounds simple, not always easy to do. And this is very undervalued. Um, the first thing and a very important thing is learning to say no. And it's, I know it sounds really weird. Like how does learning to say no help with my healing? It really does because we don't realize how much energy we leak by doing things that we don't want to do because we are unable to say no, we leak a lot of energy. So what is, so what I realized is that the, that one of the most important things is how much energy do we have at our disposal? And when you fill yourself up with energy, you actually, um, you know, you, your, your aura, your energy state is expanded. But so the idea is to have an energy reserve that's more than you need. When that energy is depleted, that's when you start to develop physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. They don't just show up in a vacuum. You don't get sick just like that. They, um, it takes time. And, the, and what happens during that time is that your energy is being depleted slowly. So what we have to do is we have to look at what's depleting our energy. And the first clue is what am I saying yes to that I actually want to say no to? So, so no is the new yes. No is the new yes. <laughs> and there's two. Iris and, Hidalgo wrote, yes. Yes, no, no is the new yes. also helps you to set those boundaries so you're not, ex I mean, I just literally got goosebumps. Did you guys feel that? Like when Anita said that, like the first step is by saying no. No. By saying no, I'm, I'm not going to do this, or I'm not going to tolerate this, or I'm walking away from this situation, or I'm not going to get involved in that drama. No. Yeah, exactly. Yes. yes. No. <laughs> and, and there's so much I can say about that because, because, you know, when, when you say like, let's say people say to me, but I have to, you know, I have a aging parent or I have kids and, and so I have to be there for them all the time. And so what I say to them is you need to take time out to recharge your batteries because if you don't and you feel you need to be there for uh, out of obligation, but you're completely depleted, here's what's happening. They are absorbing your energy. You may think you're doing them good, 
<laughs> you may think that I am I am here because I'm you know I'm a good mother and even if I'm tired I'm going to be there for my kids. But you know what? Your kids are getting a tired mom. They'd rather have you for a shorter period of time, but they'd rather have an energetic mom because that's what they're going to absorb and that is what's going to expand their energy. And yes. that's what we take with us where we go. So would you rather have a depleted person who's going to draw on your energy but they think they're being good by being there or would you rather have someone who's got an expanded energy and they're kind of sharing their energy with you right i mean i think about it like i don't want someone to come and be and spend time with me when they're not when they're exhausted my, one of my closest friends michelle whenever she doesn't feel like doing something we we both have permission to cancel at the last minute yes. if we need to if we need to you know, postpone it, or if we need to do something spontaneous, but we have permission with each other and it's a safe relationship. And you guys, you can find that safe relationship in your life where you can practice this with. Like this is so awesome to practice practice with a sister, a brother, a mother, a father, a child, a best friend, a girlfriend, a boy, whatever it is. Yes. There's yes. someone safe to practice this with because it's so empowering. And not to have, not to worry about anyone saying, Oh, that you're going to be judged, like practice it in a safe space where you know you're not going to be judged. Yes, Joanna, exactly. You don't know how to say no. But as we start doing it and not in like an abrasive way, but I say, you know what? No, my energy just isn't there. I'm not feeling so great. You know, can we postpone? I had to do that yesterday. I was completely splatted. I was exhausted. <laughs> And fortunately, the person I was doing with it is a dear friend. And she was able to say, Liz, not a problem. And Iris, you're right. It's it's so hard to learn to say no, but it gets easier as you keep doing it. Yes. Right. And, and it's in a loving way. Yeah, there are many ways to say no. And you need to you need to build a safe tribe, a safe circle of friends who understand this and who all think that way. But I wanted to mentioned like you know people who are afraid of saying no i i want to ask you this like when you when you don't want to do something but you still say yes you're doing it out of obligation right mm -hmm. so now imagine if everybody who's ever done anything nice for you imagine if you found out they did it out of obligation because they couldn't say no how would you feel it feels awful you'd it's rather they didn't do it so exactly. why do we do it you know so you're not you're being disingenuous and we have to realize that the person the other person the other party is actually picking up our energy more than our action right. and once we start to realize that and that's one of the things that that i i try and talk about more and more it's really about the impact that our energy level has more than our words more than our actions it's our energy level because it's the depleted energy that causes physical illness. Oh, yes. Are you all yes. getting this? This is so good. Okay, so that's number one. Number one yes. saying that. Is yes. that number two? Number two is that you have to take time to recharge your batteries every day. So what recharges your batteries? It's like, what do you say yes to? Um, what mm. brings you joy? What... Uh, what are the things that make you feel good? And so you really have to take the time to do this. It's learning to receive. So when you're recharging your batteries, you're receiving. So a lot of people are always saying to me that, oh, you know, the universe is not kind to me and um, the, I don't get messages from my spirit. I don't, I don't have good things happen to me. And I say, that's because your receiving channels are shut. The universe is gifting us all the time. Our mm -hmm. loved ones, our, our higher self, our soul source is trying to communicate with us all the time. But if we are not only depleted, but if we have very low self-worth, we will doubt the messages. We will not allow ourselves to receive gifts from the universe or from other people. And so all our receiving channels are shut down. So that's so important. Exactly, exactly. I, I love what you said, because I at the beginning of this call, Anita and I were schmoozing a little bit before we got on here live. And I said to her, I said, I did something so 
self-loving and self-caring today. So I usually get up in the mornings and I do my meditation and I do my gratitude exercises and I do a little journaling. And then I sit at my desk from either eight or 9 a.m. until straight through until five or six at night. And I take, a, I'll eat at my desk. I don't, I don't take a break during the day. I just don't. And this is the, the, the pitfalls of being an entrepreneur and working for yourself, right? And so today I felt, yesterday I was so exhausted and I thought, I'm gonna take a break the way normal people do. Like normal people, when I used to work in an office, eight to five or whatever the hours were, I always took an hour for lunch or a half hour for lunch. So I actually got up from my desk today. I went in and I read like a silly novel for a little bit. I sat and relaxed. I mean, I never do this, I never <laughs> do this, but it felt so great. I mean, it just absolutely felt so healing for my See? body to take that time. And I love to read. So I am so glad. Yeah. And it was it, that little, that little hour that I took for myself made all the difference in the world. And it yep. sent the message to myself that I love, I love you. I love me. <laughs> that is so important to love you, to love yourself. It is yeah. so important for us to love ourselves. A lot of people are afraid to do things for themselves. If there's something that needs to be done or somebody that needs to be cared for, they're afraid to take time out to take care of themselves. And I was like that. I mean, I had a friend when my friend, this was before my NDE, before I had cancer, my friend was diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer. I was not able to take care of myself as long as she was sick. I would feel guilty. Right. And so I drove myself to the point where I got my own diagnosis. And so, and I actually remember thinking on the day I got the diagnosis, I remember, I remember thinking, ah, now I can take care of myself. I don't want people to feel that they can only take care of themselves when they're sick. Um, a lot of people, when other people are suffering and they take care of themselves, they equate that to being selfish. I want to, um, I want to correct people's um, definition of what it means to be selfish. So first of all, there's nothing wrong with taking care of yourself and being what we normally call selfish, but so let's just divide it for the sake of simplicity. Let's say there are three categories. There are the people who are so unselfish where they give and they give and they give of themselves to the point where they are so depleted mm -hmm. that they actually need to be supported by other people. They actually need to feed off other people's energies. So in other words, that becomes even more selfish because even unconsciously, you need to feed off other people's energies because you don't know how to receive. You don't take time out for yourself. You don't take care of yourself. So you're so depleted that you're reliant on other people's energies. So then there's this other category, the other extreme, which people are afraid of becoming that. The mm -hmm. other extreme is people who are so selfish that they don't care about anyone else. It's all about them. Even at the cost of other people, they will do things for themselves. I'm not talking about that. And most people who are attracted to this kind of work, people who are attracted to my work and the kind of work that Liz Dawn promotes and produces, you are not the type to have the inclination to go to that extreme. Mm -hmm. You, Most of you fall on the other end of the scale, which <laughs> I was talking about, where you get depleted. What I am asking you to do is to do for yourself where it doesn't take away from anyone else but nor should it deplete you it needs to it needs to actually feed you so do when you do things like when you go and hang by the swimming pool and, and enjoy the sunshine or go to the beach or go eat some ice cream or you go and read a book or listen to music or go and dance and when you do these kinds of things for yourself you're not harming anyone. You're not taking away from anyone. It's not selfish. <laughs> it's not selfish at all. And when did that become selfish? And so, exactly. so people and it's okay feel... to take a day. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this for myself, you guys, because the next time I come on here with Anita, I will have taken a day off during the week just because I want to. Yes. <laughs> yes. You don't account to anybody. It's your exactly. life. You own your life. 
<laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I got exactly. into trouble when my nephew said that to, to his dad, my brother, that, oh, I don't have to go to school. My my aunt, your sister said, I, it's my life. I can do what I want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, this is kind of a good segue. You sort of mentioned it a little bit, um, but I just want to share with everyone that we are creating an absolutely exquisite healing retreat featuring Anita for four days, a four day esoteric healing retreat where Anita will take you through a tremendous amount of meditations and exercises and it will all be about you rejuvenating, healing, recharging. And I'm gonna put the, the website address right up on the screen. And as you'll note, there's no www before it. All you have to do is just put in anita.celebrateyourlife.com. So it's anita.celebrateyourlife.com. This is an in-person, this is a live in-person four-day retreat on June 2nd through the 5th in beautiful, sunny Scottsdale, Arizona at a really beautiful resort with swimming pools and there's a tennis court and we'll eat together and dance together. And Anita, I would love for you to share the inspiration for this retreat and what we'll be doing during those four days. Wow, I could go on and on about that <laughs> because I'm so excited to do this. I developed the content purposefully because, you know, during the last few years, the terrain changed and I noticed a lot of people were struggling. I struggled too, as you, as I told you. Um, and I realized something. I realized that there was a faction of people, us who are attracted to this kind of work. We are somewhat more sensitive and we're somewhat more, um, you know, more empathic and somewhat more intuitive than a lot of the people out there. The other thing I realized is that everything that's happening out in the world is very much being perpetuated by fear. That's how our world works. And everything that we are, um, everything that we are learning from the physical world, this three-dimensional, five-sensory physical world, we're learning through fear. And it starts very young, but it's got worse over the last, last few years. So it starts from the time that we're kids, we're children, and we, um, we're conditioned to compete with each other because there's not enough uh, good colleges, there's not enough good jobs, and so you have to compete with everybody else. And also, our, um, so our education system is built on fear. Our medical system is built on fear. Nobody teaches you what it means to be well and healthy. Um, we, we are basically an illness scare system, not a health care system. Mm -hmm. And so everything we do in terms of what we call our health, we actually do it from a place of a fear of illness as opposed to learning what it means to be healthy and how to take care of our bodies. And we, and we learn that um, what we learn, and this is not true, we learn that we are victims of our bodies and victims of our health. And so whenever something happens, we run to get intervention without realizing that there's a lot, not only a lot we can do, but there's a lot that we have already been doing that's contributed to our illness. Mm -hmm. So, um, and also literally everything, like even our mainstream media is built on fear, just fear-based messages. What I learned when I was on the other side is that all this fear is actually what makes us ill. It's mm -hmm. like we're living in survival. Mm -hmm. We're living in fight or flight all the time. And when you're doing that all the time, your energy is being depleted. Not only is it, so it's not just physical illness. Here's the other piece. When you're living in the survival fight or flight, you lose your connection. You lose mm -hmm. your connection with the ethers, with your soul, mm -hmm. with, with your guides, with source. You lose your connection. When you're in a space of love, when you feel safe, when you feel, ah, this is, this is a benevolent universe, that the universe has my back, when you feel that way and you really feel it, and when you feel loved and you feel love for yourself, when you feel those things, 
that's when you get the messages. That's when it's easier for source to communicate with you. So what's happening in our world right now is that the more that we're living in this fear-based world, because that's what we're being bombarded with, the more we're losing our connection with the other side. So people are saying, oh my God, why is this happening? Why is it I can't connect? But everything that we're doing is not conducive to us connecting. Everything that we're doing is disconnecting us from the other side and disconnecting us from our bodies. It's causing our bodies to uh, develop physical symptoms because our energy is being depleted. Mm -hmm. It's the fear, the buildup of fear, the fight or flight is doing multiple things. For me, the first step is to get that connection because that is the connection that when you tune in, you will start to know what is my purpose? What am I here to do? Why did I come here? Once you start to express your purpose, your energy starts to build up. Once your energy starts to build up, you'll notice healing taking place in your life. So I had this idea to create a safe environment, a bubble, if you will, for people to get into that space that feels separate from this outside world that's filled with competition and fear and hate and, and all of that stuff. So I wanted to create like a permanent place where we could go hang out all the time that's this safe bubble. But not being able to do that yet, the next best thing is to do retreats that are like that. Where people and to come connect, together. To come and together as a community and to feel the energy expand and then to to take that out with you in the world and uh, and see your body kind of feeling rejuvenated and 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 it's a wonderful way i mean i you know i've been doing this for 27 years and i get to see the results and the feedback forms of when people come together in the name of love in the name of joy in the name of peace because then you have more joy than you do as christine is, is sharing sometimes she feels good and other days bad and sad well this is going to teach you and give you the skills of how to have more days filled with joy yeah. more days filled with grace in your life and ease in your life because we absolutely need to come together in community it is imperative and i promise you when you come together for a retreat like this, for the retreat that we're doing with Anita in Scottsdale in June, it will, it, miracles will just start to unfold in your life. You'll ease. It's almost like you, you're allowed to like, ah, yeah. you're allowed to let down from the yeah. ego, from all the obligations. Just take these four days and, and take a respite from your everyday life to recharge and to refresh your mind, body, and spirit. It's absolutely exquisite. It really is. So I hope you'll come join us. The website is anita.celebrateyourlife.com. Again, it's anita.celebrateyourlife.com. And I can see we've got that HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. You can put that in if you want, but all you really need to do is just type in anita.celebrateyourlife.com and all the information about the event will be there. Um, we've got payment plans and we've got until June, which is really great. And I believe we have a discount going on right now. There's a discount. There's a $200 discount up until Thursday, March 3rd, 23rd, sorry, up until March 23rd, we've got a $200 discount. So you don't want to wait if this is something that resonates for you to come be with us. And what I always love is that um, we always have a dance party when we do retreats like this. <laughs> and I, was Anita, about that. <laughs> I know she especially asked for a dance party. So we're going to have a dance party on the Saturday night of the retreat. And it's just going to be really fun. It's a time to let loose, let your hair down and just dance in the light of your soul and enjoy and connect with who you truly are. Yeah. The, yeah, the idea is really, <clears throat> is really to keep the energy super light and super high because for me, a really important thing is that, is that feeling that connection with source and no matter what your life has been like for the last few years, um, I want to just 
I want to say this one thing that it doesn't matter what your views are on anything, you know, uh, you, no matter what has happened these last few years, because I know the last few years have been very, very divisive. The thing that I would, I want you to know is that your soul, your soul, everybody's soul, regardless of what their views are on anything that's happening in the world, our souls only crave one thing. And that is love and connection and love and the connection that comes from love. That's what we crave. And so the problems of the last few years are not what we think they are. The problems are not what's being said in the, in, in the political arena, what's being said about, you know, COVID and all it's, that's not the problem. The problem is actually the divisiveness that it's caused. That's the bigger problem. And we have forgotten to see the God in each other's eyes or the source in each other's eyes. We've lost touch with each other at a soul level. We've mm -hmm. lost touch. We've forgotten that our souls are craving that connection and that love. And that's what I want to recreate and rebuild with everybody. And we're going to. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do it. So come join us. You know, I always say to people, if not now, when? Yeah. If not now, when? When is the time that you get to step out and really do something luscious for yourself? Something absolutely wildly delicious and fun and, in, you know, introspective and coming together with community and having Anita as our leader and our guide and as our spiritual luminary to take us through four days of just total bliss and healing and understanding on a deep, 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 deep level what it really takes to heal our bodies, our minds, our spirits. And what's so phenomenal to me, Nita, is that you've done this not just once, but now twice. Unfortunately, you had to go through the second time again. <laughs> yeah. I know you really fell out this last time as well. I did. I was, I mean, it, I was, I was glad that it was not life threatening, but at the same time, I, I was kind of, I did question myself and thought, huh, maybe I'm not cut out for this kind of work. Maybe I am too sensitive or I'm feeling the energies too much. And, and then I realized again that no, um, I'm supposed to learn from this and get stronger because, because I was hearing from so many people that, that they they just can't handle the world the way it is anymore. And, and, and again, like there's no tools out there for, for people who are, sensitive to the energies and sensitive to everything that's going on out there. There's no tools. So I had to develop them myself. And it's just one of the things that when I find answers to something, I have to share it. I can't keep it to myself. <laughs> and I love that. And I love that, you know, people like celebrate your life and other events that you go to give you that opportunity, that platform, because your, your message is so important and vital in the world, Anita. It really is, you know, what better message do we have for ourselves than really learning how to love, how to, how to do self care, how to step into joy and how the importance of that. And I love what you shared at the beginning of our conversation about the first step is saying, no, no to those obligations that are overwhelming and saying yes to the things that really truly make your heart sing that make your soul just go yes yes <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the things that i'm really curious what are some of the things that you started doing for yourself that you hadn't done before that you realized oh i really love doing this why haven't i done this oh gosh um i started what let's see what did we do it, the last year or the last year or six or eight months, maybe the last six months have been so much fun for me because I really consciously did start doing things. So we started doing more road trips just for fun. So I was traveling for speaking events, but mm -hmm. the last six months we started doing more road trips just for the fun of it, just because we could. Oh, um, good. Yeah. So I loved it. I realized I really love road trips. I love packing up, getting in the car and going somewhere. And so it's just, it's not just Danny and I, so it's great fun. even if it's just Danny and I, but I have, the other thing that's happened with me is that I have started to get really close with a group of friends 
that have become like my chosen family. And mm -hmm. I spend time with them and we go on road trips together. We stay overnight <laughs> at places together. That has been so much fun for me, just exploring new places. I love traveling and exploring places for fun. Um, some of the other things that I have been doing for fun, I have started to draw like um, as in, you know, like with colored pencils and things yeah. like that. I to do that a little bit more. I used to do it a lot when I was a teenager, but haven't for years. Um, I, oh, and I don't work as hard as I used to. But here's the <laughs> weird, well, this is, this, now, uh, what I'm about to say here is a, it's a bit of a dichotomy. I appear to be working a lot harder than ever, but it doesn't feel like work anymore. So here I am saying, I don't work as hard as I used to, but the people looking at me are like, but you're involved in eight different projects. How do you do that? How do you keep up with that? That's because now I only choose the projects that feel like fun, even though they're kind of work related, but I'm right. choosing them because they feel like fun. And oh, I I've, love that. I've actually said no to anything that just doesn't feel like fun to me. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I feel very, very honored that you said yes to creating a retreat together. I just love it. I'm so I actually, I specifically said I want to do this retreat with Liz Dawn because she has a happy vibe that puts on, you know, it's like <laughs> you doing a retreat with you is like having a four day party. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I do love laughing, everyone, <laughs> giggling and doing silly things. So let me just reiterate for those of you that are just joining us, Anita will be doing a four day blissful, joyful, healing, amazing, esoteric healing retreat in person, live in person on June 2nd through the 5th in beautiful, sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. Bring your bathing suit because the resort where the event is being held has really lovely swimming pools and a tennis court. Yes, yes. So visit the website. It's all you have to do is put in anita.celebrateyourlife.com. Let me say that again. It's Anita and it's right on the screen there. It's anita.celebrateyourlife.com and it's from Healing to Whole, it's an esoteric healing retreat, and it's four days of Anita, of food, of soul tribe, of connection, of dance party, of meditation, of techniques to heal your mind, body, and soul, and also being in a state of grace and love. So Deborah, I hope I asked, answered your questions. She said, what and where is this retreat? <laughs> <laughs> Anita. <laughs> oh, I, I want to I want to add one more thing and uh, I want to explain why it's called an esoteric healing retreat and I want to address the word esoteric. So when you feel when you're going through stuff, challenges and you feel you need healing, there's so many different kinds of healing that is available out there. So we so at the lowest level we start with physical healing, usually people start by just going to the doctor and getting meds or, or some kind of medical treatment. So it's purely on the physical. And then sometimes we think, oh yeah, I don't wanna deal with pharmaceuticals or the, what's happening, the doctor is not working for me. Let me go see a naturopath. Naturopath then gives you more alternative kind of um, supplements and things like that. But they're still only dealing with on the physical level, but it's supplements and then they check, maybe there's things going on with your gut and so on. But then you kind of think, or you hear that, oh, maybe there's some emotional component to it. So you go and see people to release past trauma and things, and it releases the trauma. Um, and then you might think, oh, yeah, but you know, with energy, people talk about the energy. And so we, um, so we go maybe see energy healers, Reiki healers, practitioners to increase our energy or have hands-on energy. But what I want to do or what I am doing with all of you, and this is how it happened with me both the first time and even now a few, uh, like last year, for me, the healing comes when we connect with our soul. It's the esoteric healing and the esoteric. And so when I speak or when I address healing, I address all these components all the way from the physical 
to the emotional, to the energetic, to the esoteric. But the esoteric is the one that's neglected. You can get physical healing. I mean, you can basically get physical treatment anywhere that's available to everybody. You can get alternative treatment as well, fairly commonly, and all these others. But esoteric is really figuring out what is my soul's purpose? Why did I come here? Why have I lost passion in my life? Why have I gone the wrong way that's causing me to have this wake-up call in my body or in my life or in my relationship? That's where I want to take it. And then we can approach all those others. But I feel that the root cause is at the esoteric. And I don't really know many people that offer that. Mm. That is beautiful. I don't know anybody that does. And Anna Maria wanted to say, I love you, Anita. I love your way of living. Oh, oh. oh thank well, you. Anna Maria, I hope you'll come join us. So again, come join us in Scottsdale on June 2nd through the 5th. The early registration discount will save you $200 by registering by midnight Pacific Standard Time on March 23rd, which is Thursday. It's just coming up. Oh, and Maria says, I love your beautiful heart. I do too. I love Anita and her beautiful oh. heart. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. I love, I love you, Liz, and I love everybody out there. Every, I, I love people. I'm a people person. Yes, you are. <laughs> So again, that website, for those of you who are ready to step into the space that Anita has been describing and really, really heal on an esoteric soul level, the website is anita.celebrateyourlife.com. Again, it's anita.celebrateyourlife.com. Um, okay, so please share website. I see part of it above, but as you speak, the words are covering the full website. Okay, Deborah. So let me, I'm going to try and put it into a post here. So it's Anita dot celebrate your life dot com. I don't know if that'll come through, but it's super easy. Just all that's all you have to put into your browser is Anita dot celebrate your life. Okay, good, Deborah. Good. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad you got it. You are adored, Anita. And Julie says thank you too. Oh, I'm so glad, Julie. I'm so glad this this helped you today and and help you heal a little bit. So someone wants to know what does the sign behind you say? Love oh, it is. says love. Oh, can you see it? Love is spoken here. Oh, that is so great. That is so great. I should be covering it technically. Absolutely. Okay. So I think that's it for today. I think we're all good, everybody. And um, hopefully we'll see you all there and Anita will get to meet all of you and we'll get to dance. Yes. And oh, play. <laughs> I would love to meet everyone. I love in-person events. I just love it. I miss that energy. Yeah, I know. I know. Me too. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Having been doing this for 27 years. <laughs> yes. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. It's such a blessing that you share your time and energy with us today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Mwah. you. Thank you. you so much love. Thank and you. Anita, you'll stay right there. Yes. And we'll see you soon, everybody. Bye.